Hi everyone and welcome to online success journey. This is episode 152. Are you ready to join the clan? Today we have Dale L. Roberts, a fitness author, YouTube content creator and a self-publishing nerd. When there isn't publishing, creating videos and networking, he loves to travel with his wife and spend time playing with his cat. Hello Dale. Hey, Patience, it's great to get you on here. 152, man, that is quite a feat. You've been at this for quite a while then. I am, I am, and thank you for coming and contributing to 152. That's I super know, exciting. Okay, I know the clan is anxious to hear your story, so let's get started with the basics. Can you tell my clan a bit about yourself, your background, why did you start your self-publishing online business? You know, it's it all starts with just about everything that this sounds almost like a infomercial. And I'm sorry, some people are probably lovely listening to this and they're like, this guy's got quite a voice for radio. Uh, my apologies. This is just the way I sound. So um, my story starts out almost like one of those ones where you're like, is this really too good to be true? Because I started out in a nine to five job. And I was working in the healthcare industry at assisted living communities as an activities director. Now, to make that simple, I was paid to play with senior citizens. It sounds crazy. I know it was a fun job. I got paid well for being, being pretty much a person that just, you know, enjoys life, has fun. Um, but the issue came after about being 20 years in the healthcare industry that, um, I started to kind of feel like my job was getting in the way of my personal life. And see, I love my wife. As you kind of share a little bit of my background, um, you know, there's there's two people I hold very high in my life. One's a people and one's more of a cat. But uh, there's my wife, Kelly, and then there's my cat, Izzy. And I love the time that I spent to, spent with them and more importantly with my wife because, you know, I married her. I didn't marry my job. And... The problem was, is I'm such an obsessive person. If you watch any of my videos on self-publishing and books, you're going to start to sense my enthusiasm and my passion. And that's the way I attack everything in life. Well, the problem was that job was starting to drive a wedge between my wife and I, and it was just unacceptable to me. And I knew something had to change. It wasn't until the corporate wellness coach had intervened. She actually, she was helping me out over my job, you know, helping me write exercise and things like that. And she just discovered that, boy, he likes fitness. And I've always been into fitness. So she just challenged me one time, said, you should write a book about fitness. And, you know, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know, I should. I, I Why not? And uh, that's when I started to blindly put together my first book and you know, you fast forward about, let's see here, we're going on five years ago that that was that challenge was issued. By about 2014, uh, I launched the book and the rest is history. Really, I, I sold a few books and I became addicted to this business and I saw that there was something to it. I quit my day job within 30 days, which is insane, by the way, folks. Don't do that. That's that's never a good idea, especially if you've got a good job. Um we were having to eat ramen noodles and frozen vegetables for quite a while until I could kind of figure out this whole business. But, you know, uh, about the first couple of years, it was tough. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I burnt through my 401k. I burnt through all of my savings. But it eventually got to me to this point where I'm able to live this lifestyle that I have right now, where I can travel where I want to. I can do what I want to. I don't have to answer anybody. And if I feel like picking up and going with my wife somewhere, we'll just do that. And so that brings us to, to where we're at right now. I, I'm super happy in sharing some of what I've learned in the self-publishing business, some of what that has allowed me as far as choices and freedom, as some people would say, and uh, the rest is history. And, and I don't actually, that's wrong. You know, the, the rest is, is, is uh, further ahead of us here. And I'm real excited. So you just go and publish this book and Saturdays, you just like, I quit. What did your wife say? <laughs> How could you just quit? <laughs> <laughs> because you sold a couple of books. <laughs> what was yeah. going into your mind? Yes, I'm yes, you're going to love this. <laughs> yeah, patience, you're going to love this, and everybody's going to crack up laughing. I think I made like $21.53, and I could be off on that number. I was 20-some dollars in the course of a month. So I'm thinking if I could focus my efforts 100% on this, 
what's the possibility that I can put like a couple of zeros behind that? Uh, and my wife actually was 100% supportive. Um, she was already pursuing a uh, life as an entrepreneur. She'd actually quit her job about a year prior because she was uh, used. She was in a corporate job where cubicle. You know, you get on the computer. You're there for hours at a time. You got to answer to somebody. You got to clock in. You got clock out. She was near tears. Actually, she was in tears on numerous occasions. I think she'd be readily admit that to you. And I just said to her, I'm like, why don't you just quit it? Because, you know, I didn't like seeing her unhappy. And uh, so you fast forward about a year or so later, and she's already running a successful Amazon FBA business. And um, it was doing really well. So I knew that I had a little bit of a cushion so that's why I was like, okay, right now is a good time. I was like, we won't need to use our life savings or my 401k. <laughs> yeah, funny story, burnt through those. But in any event, um, I was able to help her out with her Amazon FBA business and start doing the self-publishing. So I, I, can't, I have to say this, that I've got one of the best wives in the world, anybody that could ask for. She's incredibly supportive. And if I go after something, she'll sometimes tell me if I'm, you know, insane, which sometimes I am. Uh, and other times she'll say, go for it. And she knew I was passionate about this. And she also knew it was going to allow us more time together. Now, like I said, first couple of years, <laughs> that was time together that um, was a little tense at times because, you know, money was a little tough. We were getting decent amount of money from Amazon FBA, but the self-publishing business was, you know, eh, it wasn't quite drawing what we'd like. But, you know, you, you get towards like right now, I look back at that and it just seems like a blip on the radar. Like it's just far off in the distance and it was a lot, it's a lot smaller to me now. You are the first one I've ever had that they quit after 2150 cent. That, that is incredible. That is courage. You just took a leap and just went, you should, I am off. Oh. It is crazy. I, I literally, I get some people that say that to me, the where they're like, they'll come to me and they go, hey, I'm working this terrible job, man. I, I hear your story. This is so awesome. I'm going to quit my day job. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> like, why don't you at least start self-publishing as a plan B? Continue to get your regular job and, and just try to tough it out. It's going to be rough at first, but it's it's way less rough than the road that I took. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of, you know, you know, uh, self-help gurus that, you know, were like, yeah, way to go, Dale. You chased your passion. You got the I could have done without all that heartache um, in between. Um and I don't want to see other people going through what I did. So if I were to ever recommend anything to my former self, if I go back in time in a DeLorean and, you know, I'll be riding with Michael J. Fox, of course, I, I would say to you, say to Dale, I'd say, Dale, don't quit your job. The job will at least keep you afloat while you work this business part time and figure things out. So um, that would be the same thing I, I just I say to other people is, you know, don't quit your day job work this business part-time on the side as it continues to grow, then you can kind of reassess, okay, am I ready to burn the boats? Am I ready to leave my nine to five job? Then that's when you're going to want to do it. But yeah, that's 20 some dollars. Like I said, it's like, I think 2153 was the total. And the funny thing is, I, I think I have to attribute a lot of that to friends and family. And by the way, that was only for a paperback book. I know you're impressed, right? $21.53. Thanks, mom. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Congratulations on your 21. <laughs> yeah. cents. It set you up for life. Well done. Well, it, cer <laughs> it certainly did. <laughs> yes. What a journey. What, what a roller coaster. Anyway, but anyway, you pass through it. Okay. So, what is the dangerous belief an online entrepreneur can have? What is a dangerous belief? Oh man, there's there's so many mistakes I see a lot of online entrepreneurs because I don't just I'm not just inside the self publishing community with indie publishers and indie authors. I'm also in video content creation as a YouTuber, as some people would say, or uh, I'm on the Twitch platform, a Twitcher. And I think a lot of people invest way too much into the instant gratification belief and that belief that there is such thing as an overnight success. Man, 
I'm going to have to say this right now. I know many successful people. I've known many millionaires. I've known a few hundred thousandaires as well. And I've known some people that are hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. And one thing, one thing that separates those people is the mindset and the belief that, you know, getting rich quick or instant gratification. Oh, I'm going to go into self-publishing and I'm going to make $10,000 or I'm going to make $20,000 in my first 30 days. Uh, I've got a reality shock for you. Um, the instances that you see, the overnight successes, okay, one, Take it with a grain of salt. The very few people that came into, say, a certain business, some type of online entrepreneurship, we're going to use self-publishing as an example. You might see someone in an interview and they say, I made $20,000 within the first 30 days. I want the skeptical side of your mind to click on and go, okay, first of all, A, is this legit? That should always be the first thing you should say. Is this legit? And B, those occasions, okay, there are those people that I call, quote unquote, unicorns. There, there are those very rare instances where they captured lightning in a bottle. Unfortunately, a lot of people think they're the next unicorn. Oh, when I saw their video, I'm going to be able to do it exactly like them. Or I bought their course, I'm going to do it exactly like them. Or I watched this video and he said, if I follow these steps, I'm going to get $30,000 in the next two days. I, I hate to tell you, there's no magic formula. There's no magic bullet. There's nothing that can trump what's called good old fashioned hard work. It takes a lot of hard work and a lot of hustling. And yes, you do have to study. Yes, you've got to do a lot of trial and error, tons of it. You're going to get more failures and then you're going to get successes. And so this belief of overnight success, I want anybody that's listening to this, if you're just jumping into this business, I want to kind of tell you, yeah, it's possible. I hope you are that one unicorn. I hope you're that person that comes to me after 30 days of being in your respective business. And you say to me, Dale, I proved you wrong because I want to be wrong about overnight success. And I want you to be a unicorn. But the reality is not everyone is a unicorn. You have to understand that there's going to be winners. And I'm sorry to say this, and this is not meaning it derogatory and it's not meaning in a put down way, but there's going to be losers. And I've lost a lot, a lot more times than I've won. And so if you just kind of just put it in perspective and understand that it takes a long time. Uh, let me give you a good example, Patience. Hopefully I'm not talking your head off, am I? I am listening. I'm taking it in. <laughs> I, I was also in the pro professional wrestling business for a number of years until uh, injuries pretty much brought me out of the game. I've got a really good friend. And his name is Dave Christ. He actually is part of Impact Wrestling right now. I'm just going to drop that name. We're going to drop that name right there. Uh, some people are like, ah, professional wrestling, whatever. Just, just, just follow, follow me through here now. Uh, professional wrestling, much like any other type of entrepreneurship, requires getting out there, getting jobs, getting paid, being a brand and representing yourself. Dave started right about the same time that I did in professional wrestling, right around 2002. It wasn't until about the last few years that he finally got traction. Mind you, he had to do a lot of working. He had to go travel to Germany, to Japan, Canada, Mexico, all over the United States before finally he was being recognized as a person within his walk of life. It took him all the way from 2002 to 2018, where we're here right now, 16 years for him to finally get recognized as one of the best professional wrestlers on the independent circuit, as well as international wrestling altogether. So can you imagine that having to sacrifice your body for your business? Now think about this as an online entrepreneur. Think about this. It's going to be so much easier for you than say it was for Dave. Okay. Dave had to use his body as his tool to get him and his brand out there and get exposure. He's had so many injuries and he's even fought through a number of them. Here's the beauty of online entrepreneurship is you don't need to beat up your body. 
All you need to do is be smart about how you make your business decisions. And you got to be very aware that overnight success, it's not real. It's just not real. You just knocked us down, Dale. You just knocked <laughs> us down. Come on. This is the man who really quit the job at the 21 and 53 cents and telling us, look, it's not real. Don't quit your job. It took this guy 16 years to be known, so don't do it. Now, are you telling us that people who are listening on this call saying that, oh, I want to start a podcast. Oh, I want to start a YouTube channel. They mm. shouldn't start. They shouldn't even try, even if they get knocked down. They should absolutely try. They should definitely do that. And that's one of the things I said, at least plan it as a plan B. So continue to carry your full-time job and try to run that side hustle. Try to do that plan B. So if you want to do a podcast channel, you can do it. It literally, and there's so many times people are like, I want to have the perfect microphone or I want to have just the great setup. We got to have some soundproof things. Listen, folks, we're in the day and age that honestly, you don't need to have it pretty. It doesn't need to be cosmetically pleasing. You just need to take the first step forward and make mistakes. I encourage you to do that. YouTube, when I started out two years ago, uh, the first, I would say, 90 days, I just kept pumping out one after the other, one video after the other. And I just wasn't seeing any of this overnight success, darn it all. Um, but I continued to try to press forward and really tried to do that. And mind you, the YouTube thing was kind of a plan B while I was doing self-publishing books. Thankfully, both plan A and plan B are pretty much on course right now. But I encourage you, you know, no, you definitely need to go after it. If you've got something within your heart you're passionate about, you say, I want to do a YouTube channel. I want to do a Twitch channel. I want a podcast and I want to put it over on iTunes. Do it. Because you got only one life to live and you might as well live it to the maximum. This might require a lot more effort than what you have to normally do if you're carrying a full-time job. So I gave you a good example here in this last one of overnight success. Let me give you another one here. My brother actually, big brother, a few years older than me, he actually runs a pretty successful Twitch channel over at twitch.tv. And uh, he makes a you know nice little plan B income from that. He gets a little bit extra scratch from goofing off, playing games, getting people to come in there and building his sense of community and his brand. And the funny thing is, not too many people realize that he has to actually put on a uniform, go to his day job day after day. And he's got to, it's very physical job. It's a very physical job. He gets exhausted. And so there are times when he gets home and he's like, I just only feel like sleeping. But then he remembers, oh yeah, I want to do this. And he'll go in and at least, at least show up for an hour to two hours doing his games. And you know, the funny thing is he tells me, you know, even though he didn't feel like it after he's done his plan B work, he says he feels better. He feels fulfilled. And that's the important thing. And sure, he's not quit his full-time job, but at least he's set up his plan B. And the nice thing is, over the past year, I've seen his brand grow and I've seen his income improve. And so in due time, you never know. His plan B might just completely take over and it'll become his plan A. And he can say, bye-bye, nine to five. I don't need you anymore because I'm going to be doing this. Like, for instance, on Twitch, playing video games. Isn't that tremendous? You can get paid for playing video games, people. This is nuts. Thank you for sharing that then. What have you learned from business as a whole? I have I've learned that I don't know everything. I, I, I've learned that, you know, when I came into this, I felt, and you know, when you get a $21 check, you feel like, I know everything. And then, you know, <laughs> I found out real quick I didn't know everything. And the more that I try to put my ego on the shelf and understand that I'm going to make mistakes and that I need to learn and that I need to actually take action, um, the better. It's, it is really just and at whatever business you're in, if you really, really wholeheartedly believe in it, it you're going to become obsessed about it and you're going to really, you know, get focused on this, become the best. If you go into whatever walk of life or any 
specific entrepreneurship endeavor, you're be obsessed about it. I want you to be super passionate about it. Be number one. That's what I'm trying to always do. And even if someone comes up and says, Dale, you made number one person on the YouTube and self-publishing books, I still won't believe it because I always believe I want to be better today than what I was yesterday, but then tomorrow even better than I am today. Dale, do you have a mentor or a coach or you know everything? <laughs> a mentor and a coach is definitely always a good thing. Right now, I hate to say this, I'm in between mentors. Um, I'd, I'd actually worked with a mentor for about the better part of about a year to a year and a half who helped me in the self-publishing business. The gentleman's name is Jason Brock. And uh, I owe a lot of thanks to Jason for where I am at today. And he actually became one of my closest friends and uh, I get to talk to him every now and then. He and I just get connected. But a mentor and a coach is absolutely a must-have. That's why I say I'm in between mentors and coaches because I know that I need to take that time with somebody else who's that one step better than I am. And that way I can always strive to become better and move forward. Um, you know, I'm always in competition with myself. And I believe that in order for you to be better, to function at a higher level. You need to have that person who's been where you want to go and who has the right tools and resources to get you from point A to point B and support you everywhere in between. What is the most valuable thing your mentor has told you? <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> um, man, uh, I love this one. There's, there's, there's actually two. We're going to hit one for right now. And if, if I don't go too long, we can always hit that second one. The one that he taught me, and this was back in 2015 when we had met up with him, my wife and I actually met up with him for a full day. And um, he looked into my KDP account, the Kindle Direct Publishing account. And at the time, I had scores of books. But, you know, I just wasn't seeing that reward. I wasn't seeing that great payday about then. And I was just, I was baffled. So I just said, you know, mold me. I, I'm going to show you everything behind this curtain. And I want you to just tell me what I'm doing wrong, what I'm doing right. Well, you know, he definitely was able to kind of zoom in on it. And this was where, this was this was the life-changing moment for me, where he said this line, he looks into my account and he sees the 90-day home workout plan and he sees the number of sales that were behind it and the number of reviews. He saw the cover and he just, he looked at that and he goes, that's it right there. You got to do it. You need to go back to the well. I love that line. You need to go back to the well and keep going back to the well. It's clear that, and I paraphrase him now from this point, point on here, it was clear that the 90 day home workout plan is something that your reading audience craves, they want, and you have found small success in this. Well, who's to say that if we don't find a different iteration, put that out into the market and see even better success, which he was 100% correct. I ended up putting out workout book after workout book until I finally hit something and it was within Let's see here. It was about July of 2015. It was January of 2016, literally on the 2nd of January. And my book, it was a collection of my best workouts called An Ultimate Home Workout Plan Bundle. Uh, it ended up becoming a number one bestseller in numerous categories over on Amazon. And um, I ended up putting it together in a case study, ended up releasing all that stuff or whatnot, and people got to see that. And uh, with this particular one, uh, it was funny. I was actually, right when that happened, I looked at it and I was like, oh my gosh, back when he told me, go back to the well, it had literally been just six months since he pretty much said, hey, you know, hang in there. It's, it's a slow burn. This is going to get get where it needs to get going. You just have to have faith in the process and, you know, follow what I'm saying. And uh, we had a conversation, uh, you know, sometime later. It probably was not too long ago. And I and uh, I said to him, I'm like, you know, you always kind of seem surprised when I followed through with some of the advice that you said, he, you know, and I think it was surprising to him because he usually shot high. He usually told me, do all these things. And he was blown away 
when I would do every last thing he would tell me. Set up this email list. You're going to get an autoresponder set up. You're going to go ahead. You're going to release your next two books here, here, and here. And I was like, okay, done. And I just got to it and I focused on it. But yeah, the one thing that he said was go back to the well. And uh, whenever I'm working with some people with the self-publishing business and we're coaching, I'll use that same exact line. <laughs> you know, go back to the well. I'll look at someone's account and I'll say, that right there, that's it. Go back to the well. You got to go back to the well and keep drawing up those those winners right there because it's it's clear that you know people are buying it. Now, opposite side of the coin, the other one, and I said this is the second phrase, so might as well go ahead and throw this one out there. We were, my wife and I were, it was probably late last year where we went to go visit uh, my buddy. And uh, we we're spending the day with him and we we're just kind of jib jabbing. And I had happened to bring up um, something about some kind of a business and video marketing. And he, he says to me, he goes, I don't know. I don't think it's worth anything. And I was just like, I keep pushing it. I'm like, ah, oh, man, you know what I'm saying? I, I feel like, you know, he's just, he said, bro. And he always just, he always starts it out with bro, bro, you're just stacking pennies. And I, I just died laughing. I'm like, you're just stacking pennies. That is the most tremendous thing I've heard is, you know, he's just pretty much telling me that, you know, if if anybody's ever listened to this and you get like a coin jar and you, you go to empty out that coin jar, you think about the process of actually stacking coins. It's so time consuming to me. I almost never stack coins anymore. I just go take it over to like Coinstar or some kind of like a coin counting machine and I'll just pay the, you know, the 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 rate or whatever it is to get it actually counted out rather than bothering it myself or take it to the bank and let them deal with it. But, you know, it's true. <laughs> if you've got these pennies, which, you know, penny can definitely have a very good worth depending on where you're at in the world. But here in the United States, really is not too much. And especially if you've just got a stack of pennies here, you're spending all your time taking that single penny and stack one after the other after the other. When he said stacking pennies, I just lost it. And ever since my wife and I have got this going joke, we see something, we're like, is that is that worth our time? Not nah, stacking pennies, bro. <laughs> okay. Tell us more about your set of publishing with Dale. Self-publishingwithdale.com is actually my uh, blog website. Funny story. It all started with the YouTube channel, as I mentioned to you a couple of years ago. Everything was revolving around me delivering the information that I was getting as a self-publisher to the world. Now, I wasn't doing all that great with self-publishing. I was, meh, all right. We'll just put it that way. That's, that's just the best way to put it. And um, the problem was... I was getting a ton of questions. People were like, how do you format your book? How do you publish to Kindle? How do you do this? How do you do that? And so rather than me spending countless hours answering the same questions over and over, I said, huh, I might as well just go ahead and do a YouTube channel. And then I could just send people on over there. So it started innocent enough trying to provide people with the service. Now, selfpublishingwithdale.com, this is where this comes in. That actually was just strictly meant to support the YouTube channel. I just wanted to create some way to backlink my videos to where it started to help in search engine optimization of my YouTube videos. Little did I know that what I created would turn into what it's, you know, getting hundreds of unique hits per day. Now, that's nothing. Some people are like, ah, I get 10,000 per day. Hey, this ain't too bad, especially for how niche down my subject is. Um, and then it was late last year. I actually got a um, blog named Feedspot that actually reached out to me and said, hey, uh, I just voted for you. You're one of the top 100 self-publishing websites. And I was like, what? How did I do that? Um, and it's so funny that at that same time, I just got done interviewing a guy who's been in online entrepreneurship, which I highly recommend. Patience, if you ever get the opportunity, reach out to this guy. You need to have him on your show. And everybody else, when you hear this as well, look him up. His name's Johnny Andrews. That's J-O-N-N-Y. Johnny Andrews is a awesome, awesome guest to have. And he's also a very credible resource in online entrepreneurship. In fact, he is a business strategies consultant. This guy, if there was anybody that's going to be my next mentor, probably Johnny, he, he really started at the bottom. He is the best case scenario of a zero to hero story. Someone who started out and living in his car and, you know, nearly six figures in debt 
to where he is now pulling in six to seven figures per month helping out other people. But uh, I got him on my show. And I didn't know what I was getting into with this guy. He was he was a firecracker. He makes me look calm. Um, and uh, Johnny got done with the interview. He loved it a lot. And he promoted the heck out of it. So what I ended up doing was before he started promoting it, I just went ahead and I took it and I did a featured segment over on my blog. I take my show notes of some of the interviews. So things that I'm reading off a of script and I'll just repurpose those into blog content, and then I'll embed the video. See, no secret to this stuff here, folks. This is pretty awesome. All I'm doing is taking the same content, repurposing it over into a blog, and then people that don't want to watch a video can read the content, and vice versa. Those people that don't want to read the content, they can watch the video. So Johnny ends up sending a ton of traffic. We're talking, I'm like maybe getting six to a dozen hits per day. <laughs> Like, and, and that was a good day. There were some days, no, no traffic whatsoever. So all of a sudden Johnny's sending me traffic, Feedspot sending me traffic. And then I started getting more shares of these posts and it was crazy. So self publishing with Dale.com ended up taking on a life of its own. And even now more recently, when I had transitioned off the Patreon platform, I went and I took all of my extra video content and I actually have it hosted over on self publishing with Dale.com. So people that want to, you know, donate to the cause and be part of the video membership, they end up getting that. So that's another walk of online entrepreneurship. We can always talk for another day. So how do we contact you? How do we get this whole selfpublishing.com? Tell us how can we get in connect with you? The best way to connect with me is to definitely just head over to selfpublishingwithdale.com. There's tons of great resources there. I've got an about and contact page. You can go ahead and hit me up there. Rather than giving you guys all these different links and trying to remember these things, just remember this, selfpublishingwithdale.com. And uh, that's all you'll need to remember because it's going to show you all the things. It's going to lead out to Twitter. It'll lead out to Facebook. It'll lead out to YouTube. It'll lead out to all these different things. There's excellent guest posts. There's uh, people from Lulu that have posted in here from Lapid Marketing, from all walks of life. So this is not just me putting up posts. There are other experts within this industry. So you're going to find some great and awesome resources about self-publishing your own books if you just head over to selfpublishingwithdale.com. So, Clan, there will be more from there in a moment if you are listening on one of the many podcasting platforms rather than my website and you are encouraged by Dale's journey, go to onlinesuccessjourney.com for a bonus portion of the interview. The Online Success Journey is a wonderful membership community built for people searching for the path to success. We are one big clan and you can be part of this community for free. Once you have joined the clan, click on part of Dale's journey or over a hundred other journeys that are available and learn how you can find the right path for your own online success journey. That's a wrap clan. Remember, success is a journey. Patience and Dale.